The jokes write themselves. This video is brought to you by the Spider Combat Arena. Support the Kickstarter today. Oh my goodness. So, what do y'all hit me up in my DMs on Twitter? Follow me on Twitter if you haven't. Um, talking about Lucas, you gotta check out this interview. You gotta, you gotta check out this interview. The diaspora is united against the buffoonery in this interview. And I'm like, okay, okay, let me, let me check out this video. And sure enough, the title of the video, I, I, I knew it was gonna be fun once I saw the title. Uh, Kenyan man destroys black America. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, bro. These, these mofos is evil, bro. These demons is evil. That is the craziest thing I've heard in my life. Because I want you to understand. Can you explain to me why on earth would you be interviewing a Kenyan man to talk on FBA business? Hmm? Does that make any sense to you? Now, would you interview me to talk on uh, Kenyan business as far as hey, this is what's going on Kenya Kenyan men are weak and would you do that? Of course not of, co of course not. It would make no sense No sense, but you have this saltine interviewing this man and this dude is going through all of the talking points Oh my goodness what it is And you see this very often especially in politics is that what you have is a representative tool that's what I coined them as, representative tool. And what that means is you need someone who represents the group that you're going to malign, right? In this case, he doesn't have to be black American, but he's black, right? Or in some cases, they don't even have to be black. They just have to look black. They just, it just needs to be a representation of the group that you want to malign in some way, you know, shape or form or fashion, something. You couple that with the tool, right? We got the representation, now we need the tool. And what the tool is, is that this person is gonna regurgitate and repeat all of the, 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 the narratives and the talking points you want them to, which makes them a tool, which then transforms this representative tool into a propaganda machine. And that's what this interview was. It was nothing more than anti-black propaganda Okay, and the beautiful thing is, here's the beautiful thing. This is the hustle. This hustle is as old as time, all right? These, these saltines, these demons have been doing this for quite some time. What they do is feign ignorance. You'll see this, you'll see this, uh, who does this? Kundus Owens does this all the time, right? They'll feign ignorance. Why, I'd like to know what's going on. Tell me what's happening. Why are black people killing one another? Why is that going on? Can you tell me? <laughs> they feign ignorance knowing that the representative tool is going to repeat the talking points that they want to repeat, which goes in line with their narrative, which makes it propaganda. That's all it is. It's a propaganda piece. That's all this is. You have this little saltine talking about, well, this is what you said, right? You just, what, why do you believe that just black people are dumb? I mean, those are your words, okay? Those are your words. Mm -hmm. And you're saying essentially that black people are cursed in some way. Like, you know, God and the devil conspire to just say, ah, black yes. people are dumb. Yes, yes. I, I'm just paraphrasing what you said. And boy, goodness, they, they so evil, bro. It's so evil. I want to go over just, just a, a cursory glance at this interview because it's really, I had to laugh. I just, you know, I just had to laugh because the whole dynamic of this interview is comedy. I thought this was going to be a, 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 a comedy skit. That's what I thought it was at first. Mind you, this man has been in the States for less than two years. <laughs> I kid you, bro, I kid you not. This man has been in the States, United States of America, for less than two years. I've been in this country for two years. Mm -hmm. I have a Mercedes-Benz S550. Huh? And is having an interview with this salt team trying to talk about, oh, he's destroying black America. Make it make sense. Make it make it make sense. I don't know what to tell you. And you have Kenyans in the comment section talking about what are you talking about? How are you gonna talk about an experience that you've never that you've never had? Right? You have Kenyans getting on him. You have FBA, black Americans getting on him. Bro, this man has united the diaspora against his tap dance and buffoonery. Okay? 
But nevertheless, this individual starts talking about um, how uh, everyone takes advantage of us. Now, are we doing well? No, we're not. Right? Everybody comes in and takes advantage of us. Mm. So why are we pretending that we're doing well? We're not doing well. Let's just pause right there. Let's just pause just for a quick second. Because I want you to understand, they have managed to condition us as a people to believe that that makes them some type of intelligence, that that makes them there's some type of a superiority factor in deceit. And if you look at this country, look at America today, what is it? Nothing but corruption, nothing but manipulation, nothing but deceit, okay? Duplicitousness all over. And that's what they favor. That's what they, as far as put at, uh, on top of the pedestal. Now, upon you being uh, susceptible to such wicked, vile behavior, now you're the bad person, right? Now you're inferior because you fell for the evil person's tricks. Now make that make sense. <laughs> How are you going to put on a pedestal the corruptive, manipulative behavior of a group and then malign the, the, the one group who actually believes them, the innocent nature of the other group, who's actually being taken advantage of. It doesn't make any sense. But like I said, evil does as evil does, bro. This person is clearly a, a, a lineage of evil, unfortunately. You have a lineage of evil talking to another individual who has a lineage of evil. But then he goes on talking about abortion. He's talking about, right, he goes on to talk about <laughs> abortion. They're killing their own. You know, I'm more likely to ki get killed by someone who looks like me than I am by you. The, the rate of uh, abortions is highest in the black community in America. There's a higher chance of me being killed by a black man in this country of yours than by somebody who looks like you. Once again, bro, once again, I used to think this until I actually did some due diligence and started looking at the data. Because the data and what they say are two different things. It's two different things. Because when they talk about abortion, if you look into it as far as why do black women it, it get abortions, it's due to finances. Now, where do those finances come from? Where, where does that problem stem from? It stems from, the, 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 as far as reparations. It stems from the, the generational wealth gap that we have, okay? But if you mention that, what do these, what do these saltines do? Well, d d d d that's excuses. They have managed to weaponize history for their benefit. They have managed, they have managed, think about what I'm saying. They have managed to, to promote inaction. They have glorified inaction by weaponizing excuses. That's what they have done. Because if you tell them, hey, this is why this is, well, then they respond to what? Excuses. By them labeling it as excuses, what does that now give them? It gives them freedom, right? Now it alleviates them from responsibility. This is how demonic these people are. They have done everything in their power to do manipulative tactics to alleviate them from any type of responsibility that they have caused to, to, the, to us as a people. And they have done that by simply putting it back on us. You're a slave? Well, they, 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 hey, that's an excuse. Stop saying, stop making excuses. <laughs> that's, that's what that's what they're doing. This is this is what this is. If you listen to any uh, uh, psychologist speak, this is an abuse, an abuse tactic. This is what abusers do. These people, as I've said, a lineage of evil. They have managed to make us to, to, to make it seem that it is our responsibility for their wickedness. Because they have caused wickedness upon us and have, and to the detriment of our community, that is our fault. That is our fault. Their wicked behavior is our fault. The outcome from their wicked behavior is our fault. That's sick. That's really demonic. That's, that's twisted perversion. And that's what they do. And he talks about when it comes to, to oh, a black person, interracial crime is exactly that. Not interracial, intra-racial, within the group. Black people usually typically live around other black people. So guess what happens when crime goes down? Black, black. White people typically you live around other white people. So guess what happens when crime goes down? White, white. But they don't, they expect you not to know this. And that's what many within the Republican and the Democrat do, is that they, they, they play off of your ignorance. You are a, a prey to them. An ignorant person is, is prey to, to a, a knowledgeable person. 
And that's what they do, and they manipulate you. They, it's a, it's a, honestly, it's emotional, it's emotional terrorism. That's what they're doing. It's emotional terrorism because they are grooming you intellectually to be against you. And if you listen to this, this simpleton, and that's what he is, he's a simpleton. He's nothing more than, as I said, a representative tool for his own demise. If you listen to what he said, he's just pretty much repeating all the, the racist, anti-black talking points that, you know, that we've seen throughout, throughout history. But to even talk on that, I want you to understand when it comes to as far as black men versus black men, you have to look as far as the context of that crime. Um, because they, the, the demons love to, to couple all that in. I'm sorry, but, but I'm sorry. Deshaun, who may have robbed uh, D uh, due to some gang affiliation or due to, to poverty or, or something around those realms, is night and day from Peter, who, who uh, offs little Timmy because Jesus told him to, okay? <laughs> those, aren't, those aren't the same thing. All right. If you, as I've said before, if you juxtapose the criminal activity within the black community to the white community, if you juxtapose the white man to the white to the black man, listen. If we acknowledge that many, as far as they want to say, the single parent households and everything, and the incarceration rates, if they want to use that and the poverty, you juxtapose that to your average, you know, average Timmy who's doing the crime. He comes from a a a. a, a not not a single parent household. Both of his parents are in, are in the household. He comes from not poverty. He's usually middle class to upper class. So what is his excuse? They never explained that one. Well, you have all the opposite of what you, as far as blame black people on, but yet you still doing crazy crime. Why are you doing crime? Can someone explain that one to me? Why did you air out the school? Hmm? Can you explain that one? Can you explain that one to me? Because if you actually look into it, as far as the mental, as far as the suicide rate, skyrocketing within their community. When it comes to mental illness, skyrocketing within their, within their community. Even if you look at per capita, because they love per capita. All of that, per capita, overrepresented. They are overrepresented when it comes to mental illness. Now, I would argue that's a lineage of evil. That evil is, is catching up to them. That's what's happening, and it's causing, as far as turmoil within the communities, you see their children. Their children aren't even children anymore. Their children don't even know who they are or what they are. You can see that. So I, I just find it interesting, you know, what, what crimes they, they want to focus on, what crimes they want to just completely skip, whether it's embezzlement, whether it's arson, whether it's a, <laughs> a, a, a fraud, okay? All of them, per capita, numbers skyrocketing. But I digress, I digress. Moving forward, he then goes on to talk about, oh, it's the reason why black America is failing or whatever, because we're listening to the women. So it's a high time somebody tells them the truth, which is you guys are up. The black people have been cast by it because they follow the women. Now, I don't, I, there's, no, <laughs> there's nothing to say to that because there's no merit to that. There's, there's absolutely no merit whatsoever to that black men aren't as far as as far as uh, uh, i don't know or uh, uh you know kowtowing to black women like that's not what's going on at all but yet he listened to me this saltine has interviewed a kenyan man who has been in the country for less than two years hasn't even been full two years it's been a year and a half and he's questioning him about hey what's going on with black america now you tell me if that's not uh disingenuous you tell me how wicked you have to be to do something like that, right? And then play like, I don't, well, this is what you're saying. Wicked. Wicked on both sides. Absolutely wicked. A hundred percent. Now, what I will say, if you look into the history of this country, which this Kenyan man probably doesn't know, and I don't know anything very much about the history of Kenya, but I, you don't see me talking on Kenya. You don't see me doing that. And what needs to happen is exactly what's happening in those comment sections, but it needs to relay into the real world, okay? Like I said, there needs to be some consequences. There needs to be some repercussions for such anti-black behavior. But nevertheless, if you look at, if you know as far as the history of this country, you can see as far as how, how, how this country uh, has tried to create a, a divide, a wedge between the black man and the black woman. They've done that as far as economically. They've done that as far as educationally. They've done that in a variety of ways, as far as culturally, okay? So you have to understand um, history in order to speak on it and to actually have an educated grasp of what is currently going on. 
which this individual doesn't have. That's why he's just regurgitating, you know, uh, anti-black talking points Why, you know, while this saltine laughs and giggles it up. But to wrap this up, I think one of the funniest things of the interview is when he talked about how white people should be able to say the N-word. And <laughs> I don't... Because why are we taking away language from everybody? Mm. Shouldn't I be strong enough to handle whatever the f*** you want to tell me? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I don't know what to tell you. I mean... <laughs> I mean, by all means, you know what? And you know what they always love to say? They always love to make this false equivocation of, oh, well, it has to do with a, 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 a censorship, right? They always go with the censorship bullcrap. Uh, they always have to say, well, why are we limiting speech for other people? And it's like, listen, if that's what you feel, because they always have these people talking about black people and the N-word and everything, why don't we ever have anyone saying, hey, why can't we say the K-word when it comes to the Jewish population? Hmm? Why, why don't I ever hear anyone argue that point? Huh? Can someone tell me that? Why, why can't I say that word? Huh? What, what's wrong with that? Why is there so much censorship? Why on college campuses can't I say the, the K word in regards to, to the, the, the people of Israel? Why can't I do that? I never hear that coming up. Have you? Have you ever heard a conversation like that coming up? I haven't. I haven't. So, like I said, I always find it interesting what conversations come up when it comes to free speech and censorship of words and everything. You know, I find that humorous. Um, and it's also, once again, the juxtaposition is, is telling of the hypocrisy and the anti-black underlining of, of the question, right? Of the narrative that they're, you know, that they're discussing. And then the other one was the cherry on top of this stupid Sunday talking about, hey, there is no oppression. And the reason why is because the people uh, who, who uh, enslaved your, your grandfather, well, they're dead now. So they, the oppression died with them. Now, <laughs> the person who did that to your grandfather or to your great-grandfather died the same time when your grandfather died. Yeah. So the problems and the oppression died then. They, that doesn't exist anymore. I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon? <laughs> it's... It's so dumb that it's humorous because it's like there's no way a grown man can be this ignorant. There's no way. Like you have to be doing like some type of skit here. Cause that, does that make any sense? Doesn't, that's the whole point of systems, right? That's the whole point of systems. Even if you knew anything as far as business, you understand there are systems in place so that in case someone dies or quits, the whole business doesn't go, you know, kaboom. That's the whole point of the system that it doesn't necessarily need you to advocate it for, right? Advocate for it, that it's the system, that it's going to exist whether you like it or not until you break down the system, until you abolish the system. And furthermore, clearly, if you've been paying attention with what's going on, clearly, yeah, the great, great grandfather of the saltine who was whipping my grandfather passed away, but guess what? That's why it's called the lineage. They have a lineage of evil because they pass down that mentality, that thought, their wicked behavior to their children, to their children's children, to their children's children. OK, that's what you have to understand. So to think that, oh, because so and so is gone, everything's peachy. There is no oppression. That is a childlike mindset. And it's not reflected in any of the data. It's not reflected in housing when we, we're still having redlining. It's not reflected in education, as we can see. It's not reflected um, in, in, in healthcare, as we can see. So uh, there's, there's something to be said about an ignoramus, right? About an ignoramus who has a microphone in front of them. And there's something to be said about the, the, the saltine anti-black racists who would put that microphone in front of them. I think they're both a part of a evil, corrupt system, and I think there should be consequences for promoting anti-black racist uh, 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 narratives. That's what I think, because not only is it detrimental to black Americans, right? And if you're American, well, then surely you would want to care about the black Americans. But secondly, it's, it's detrimental to the country. You, you, you can't have a, a unity within a country if a group of people are constantly berating uh, maligning and disparaging another group of people. It's just not going to happen. 
Anyways, guys, that's the video. Let me know what you guys think. Um, actually, no, there is no what you guys think, okay? Because I don't care what the saltines have to say. You guys are saltines. I mean, of course you're gonna agree with anti-black uh, rhetoric. And I don't care what the, 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 the non-FBA or the FBA who are uh, Sambos have to say. Of course you're gonna agree with anti-black rhetoric. You're Sambos. I, I mean, it's, it's, there, there, there is no middle ground and that's the hustle. That's another hustle. Uh, when it comes to these demonic uh, uh, individuals, they try to make a middle ground. Well, what's the problem? He just has an opinion. Okay, okay. You, you'll find how often they'll give you that leeway to have an opinion, right? That, that gray area of nuance and where that nuance happens to disappear. Um, and I just happen to find out that that nuance is always uh, uh, having, having to deal with anti-black rhetoric and that when it disappears, it has to deal with them. So... Uh, I'm not here to play games with these wicked, evil uh, individuals. But if you happen to disagree, you're more than welcome to call in during Disagreement Day, uh, which is typically held Friday through Sunday. There'll be a number on screen. You call in, we duke it out. Either or, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, comment. I expect some fragility, possibly in the comments. Uh, <laughs> there always, there's always a few. Uh, like, uh, share, and subscribe, and a lot. That fun stuff. Till next time, guys, be amazing. Even if you look at per capita, because they love per capita.